Hi, I'm Tara and welcome to Let's Do Books. Email me at thelesbianreview.com with any questions or comments or come join the Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club. I'm excited because I'm joined today by Rosalind Sinclair. You may know her as Telenu, author of the greatest fanfic of all time, Truth and Measure. And her first book, The Lily and the Crown, is out this month from Ilva. If you want, you can pick that up anywhere. Rosalind is here today to talk about other people's books. Authors are readers too, so I'm asking her about what books she loves. So welcome, Rosalind. I'm so excited to talk to you. Hi, Tara. Thank you so much for having me. So what books do you want to talk about? I've sort of thought of about how I might want to approach this because it seems like there's sort of two prongs here. And one of them, of course, is professionally published fiction. And then the other one is my first love, which is fan fiction. Uh, so whichever one you want to focus on or you think people would be interested in, I could talk about all day. Well, let's start with the published fiction, and then we can go to the fanfic. Absolutely. So what's your first book? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first one on my list, I'm going to have to say, is The Price of Salt by Patricia Highsmith, which, you know, of course, was turned into the movie Carol, and which was so terrific and so many people love. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just because it was one of the earliest lesbian books to feature a happy ending, but because it's genuinely just a terrific story with really absorbing, engaging characters, a terrific writing style. You read it, and it also kind of features one of my own personal favorite tropes, which is an age gap between the pairings. So wow. I really enjoy that for all kinds of reasons, not just because of the movie or its sort of historical importance, but just because I think it's a terrific read. So The Price of Salt. So I actually shamefully haven't read this yet. There might be a handful of other people who haven't either. Can you just say a little bit of what it's about? Well, it's about, it's set in, oh, now that I've said it, I can't remember the year that it's set in, but 1950s or 60s, I mm -hmm. want to say one of those. And it's about a young woman named Therese who works in the department store. She's got this boyfriend that she's not really understanding why their relationship isn't more fulfilling. I mean, anybody, any lesbian who reads it, who's tried to date a guy will recognize exactly what's going through Therese's head. I mean, it's just, it's overwhelming. You'll read it and you'll just be like, oh, that's me right there trying to be somebody I'm not and not understanding why. Until right. there's love, and she's like, she's a, she's younger than 20 uh and maybe 19 and then there's love at first sight when she sees you know carol aired and then in the movie they're played by rooney mara and kate blanchett and i think the casting's just perfect carol is in her early 30s i want to say and all of a sudden therese is just like she has a firecracker that goes off in her brain and she falls in love with carol instantly and all of a sudden, she kind of comes to life, which, again, I think is an experience a lot of us have had when suddenly, you know, we see what it is that we want. And so because she doesn't live in this world where lesbianism is openly talked of, she doesn't really have any models, anybody to talk to, any way to understand what she's feeling. She only knows that there's this incredibly compelling older woman who has a kid who's in the middle of getting a divorce from her own husband. Carol is, you know, at her age, a little bit more secure in who she is, but they're still living in this world that refuses to recognize their relationship as legitimate in any way. So the story is about them growing closer, kind of what it's like for them to detach from the men in their lives, all of the difficulties they face and kind of trying to get together and being a functioning couple. I don't want to ruin the surprise, but as I said, older lesbian fiction almost always featured an unhappy ending. Uh, mm -hmm. Which wasn't, and this is going to sound weird, uh, it's, it wasn't necessarily seen as a bad thing because people said, listen, no representation is better than none. Uh, and we're living our own lives and we understand that, ha that you know, unhappy endings aren't necessarily our destiny. So it was kind of people took what they could get. But yeah. then the price of salt came along and it was happy. And so people are still reading it in a way that I think a lot of the old pulp fiction, you know, is just kind of consigned to the wayside. All right. That sounds pretty, pretty good. And like a gap that I need to fill in my. Oh, I would uh, recommend it. It's great. So what's the next one you want to talk about? I would say Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, who, of course, um, she's written a lot of uh, really important lesbian fiction that's also historical fiction. Uh, she's mm -hmm. also written Tipping the Velvet. The Paying Guests was the other one that I've read. But I would have to pick Fingersmith as the best. And it's set in uh, the 19th century, a Victorian 
England. And it's this kind of classic story, really, that's set up as a con in which there's this young girl named Susan and this older kind of slimy guy who Susan only thinks of as gentleman. And Susan grows up in a den of thieves, uh, mm -hmm. pickpockets and so on. You know, they take stolen goods and resell them and all of that. They're really kind of sketchy. Uh, and this guy named Gentleman shows up and says, listen, I found this rich girl who's living with her uncle and she hates her life. I think that I can seduce her and marry her. We'll make a fortune. Sue, why don't you come with me and be her lady's maid and help me con her into this relationship? And the plot winds up getting really intricate to the point that I don't think I could reproduce it if I tried. So I won't, okay. uh, except to say that, you know, Sue meets Maud, who's the other girl, and sparks fly. And there's all kinds of amazing just twists and turns, just like the last, I think the last whole 200 pages, you're not going to be able to put it down. So I would say that's okay. terrific. Yeah. And if you avoid historical fiction, I wouldn't worry about it in this case, just because the story is so good and the voices are so compelling. So even if that genre is not usually your thing, I would, I would totally go for Fingersmith. Okay. And what is your last one that you want to talk about? Uh, the last one is, and now for something completely different. Uh, <laughs> it's beach reading. It's just totally fun. It's called Iron and Velvet by Alexis Hall. And it's part of a series, and the heroine's name is Kate Kane, and she's this kind of, you know, hardened, smoking, private detective, uh, you know, who's seen the world, and she's so cynical and everything, but she's also half fairy. She meets this compelling, you know, sexy lesbian vampire, and there are also uh, sexy lesbian werewolves and witches, and it's all set in modern-day London, uh, and she's hired to go on a case. You know, and it's just, again, it's total fun, uh, complete escapism. I just kind of enjoyed myself all the way through. And thanks to Melissa Braden's podcast, which I just listened to recently, uh, I just purchased and playing the role of herself. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Like I just, I heard that and I went straight to Amazon and bought it. So as soon as I'm done with what I'm reading right now, the next, I think it'll be two books down the line. I'm really looking forward to that one. That book people who are regular listeners of this podcast will know that book is very very near and dear to my heart because it's the first lesfic that i ever read so i love it a whole lot and actually it recently came out in audio too if anybody prefers listening to books rather than reading in hard copy or kindle you can pick that up at audible or anywhere with the great lisa cordelione narrating it oh fantastic yeah, I'm not, I like audiobooks when I'm going on long road trips, but otherwise there's just something about, you know, reading it for myself. But of course, I know that's not possible for everybody for a variety of, of reasons. Well, if you're going to go on a long road trip and you want a book that's hilarious, she also narrated Just Jory by Robin Alexander, and it's fabulous and hilarious and sweet and highly, highly recommend it. Cool. I'll make a note of that. Thank you. So... Those are the published books you wanted to talk about, but as I mentioned in my intro, you've really been a huge part of the fanfic world, so there's some fanfic that you wanted to share with us as well. Yeah, um, I can uh, sort of talk about the hows and whys of when I got into fanfic later if you want, but in terms of the stories that I love, the first one I'm going to have to name, and you mentioned it appears on your site, and then I remember I read that list and I saw it on there, uh, is the Just Between series. And it's by Gina Dart, and it's Star Trek Voyager. And it's uh, Captain Catherine Janeway and Seven of Nine, who, you know, is the sexy Borg in the skin-tight cat suit, Jerry Ryan. Oh, yes. And, yeah, <laughs> we, we all remember we Seven all, of Nine. We all do. <laughs> oh, my Lord. And um, I was actually, I watched the first few seasons of Voyager. I was never really active in the fandom, uh, and for a while... Uh, don't tell anybody. I know that this is a secret podcast. Uh, oh, but at right. first, I really liked the pairing of Janeway and Chakotay. Uh, I was terribly mistaken. Oh. Yeah. But then I ran across this series. And I think it might have been. I don't know if it's the first Femslash I ever read, but it's the first Femslash I remember reading. 
And the way that it sort of opened my eyes to the possibility of this long series where, you know, it could take twists and turns and the author could explore these two characters in more depth. And of course, it was also very sexy. That helped a lot. Um, yeah. And it was, I think, so, yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to say for the people who are listening and aren't familiar with fanfic, can you just explain what Femslash is? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Femslash is the fandom version of Lesfic. Uh, it's stories, fan fiction stories that are about two women in a queer relationship of some kind. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that was a series that Lee Winter suggested on the list, and there's a lot there for people who like to read for a really long, meaty story. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so what's the next one you want to talk about? Well, um, as you might have mentioned, uh, I started off uh, the stories that I'm probably most well known for, fem slash uh, lesbic fandom, uh, is The Devil Wears Prada. And I've read so many great stories in that fandom that I was tearing my hair out thinking, it's got to be something from that fandom. What do I pick? And uh, the one that leapt to mind that a lot of other people are in the fandom are going to, everybody's familiar with this one, is the Small, Fla uh, Small Favors series by Chili Flame. Uh, in other places, she's called Harriet. And it's another take, uh, one of the earliest stories in the fandom, one of the earliest you know, series in the fandom. And it's another take on Andy coming back, uh, meeting Miranda again after she's quit Runway and kind of the ways that they reconnect and the ways that their relationship develops. Uh, just great characterization, really interesting plot, super hot sex, would recommend. All right, well, that might be... Uh what i'm going to be rating for the rest of this week <laughs> uh, yeah yeah thumbs up right there small fingers uh, so what's the last one that you want to talk about this one i could talk about for days uh, i'll try not to but a heads up it's something <laughs> i'm reading right now a work in progress the author says it should be done by early 2018 uh, it's a very long story and she's got a lot of real life commitments but it's absolutely terrific uh, it's called anyone who has become the author's name is ellie dash uh, which I think is short for Eleanor Dashwood, and I just think that's the most hilarious thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Me too. And it's actually in the Grace and Frankie fandom, which is where I'm currently kind of ensconced. Uh, and for anybody whose eyebrows just kind of shot up, Grace and Frankie is a Netflix original series starring Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. And it's about two husbands played by Sam Waterston and Martin Sheen, uh, Grace and Frankie are married to these guys, and then they find out that their husbands are leaving them for each other because they've been carrying on this, you know, 20 years long gay love affair. And Grace and Frankie have never liked each other. It's kind of the traditional odd couple setup. But thanks to this, they find themselves thrown together and kind of living together in the wake of, you know, their divorces and having their whole world rocked. And there's three seasons. Uh, the characterization evolves each season, but the fandom didn't show up until after season three when all of a sudden Grace Hansen, Jane Fonda's character, just got really, really gay. <laughs> 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 like, you know, there's never any overt anything, but I feel like any lesbian who watches season three is just going to be like, oh my God, that woman's gay. Like Jane Fonda's performance just brought it. And all of a sudden, there were all these possibilities that nobody had seen before. And so I've written a couple stories, too. But what Ellie Dash's story does is it picks up on how the character manifests sort of in season three. And it's this beautiful, gorgeously written story. I mean, I, I'd stack it up against most novels that I've read, some of the best. And it's not just about the relationship that develops between Grace and Frankie, but it's also a story about Grace coming out mostly to herself at the age of 73 mm -hmm. uh, and figuring out kind of who she is and what she wants. And it's just tremendously moving and powerful. And a lot of us, I think it's safe to say, have had our lives changed in some real material ways because of that, because it's such an honest and sometimes beautiful and sometimes painful expiration. And I think in this case, the age of the characters, because too many people say old women aren't sexy. Uh, we don't want to read stories about 70-year-old women. Uh, but in this case, the age of the characters is almost this sign of hope. And the fandom is actually mostly populated by a lot of younger people. And I think part of it is just this message that it's never too late to be yourself and to find happiness and to be fulfilled. So I would definitely, anyone who has become, I would recommend that highly. 
That's so cool. I apparently need to watch all of Grace and Frankie and, and then read this. Yeah, I uh, I got Lee Winter into it. Of course, she's another wonderful writer. And fair warning, Grace in season one doesn't look so good. And Jane Fonda didn't like Grace in season one either. So you got to make it through. But then you look back and you go, oh, my God, the gay was there the whole time. <laughs> the gay was calling from inside the house. All right. Well, I'm going to be watching it with an eye looking out for the gay the whole time. Yeah, do it. Absolutely do it. So is there anything else that you want to share with listeners just about your journey as a reader? Okay. Uh, well, one thing right now that I try to do is I tend to switch up genres. Um, so I read five Les Fix books, you know, in a row. Now I'm currently switched on to literary fiction. And the next thing I'm planning to read is actually an academic text. And it's called The Apparitional Lesbian by, oh, what's her name? Uh, Terry Castle, and it's about lesbians and queer women in popular culture, so that's more nonfiction. I tend to reread a lot of things. Uh, I get obsessive about stuff I love, and then I go back to it again and again and again. I'm also in education and teaching English, so I read a lot for my job. Uh, so actually, sometimes that cuts down on my pleasure reading, and I've actually started to make a really concerted, conscious effort to get back to reading for pleasure because sometimes when you get home at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do is pick up a book. You just want to waste your time watching TV or whatever. So, yeah, I'm trying to build it into making it a regular part of my life because it just used to be something that I couldn't ever stop doing. I was a constant reader as a child. Uh, and it's the love of it that I'm getting back, and it's really rewarding. And a lot of it is kind of tied up in my upbringing, you know, the environment that I had, uh, one thing uh, I do want to say in terms of, you know, I had these two different columns. I had lesfic and then I had fanfic. One of the reasons for that is, in terms of my journey as a reader, uh, so much of my reading, like I said, is tied up in my upbringing. I grew up in a conservative house. There was straight romance lying around, you know, like Harlequin and Silhouette books. <laughs> my grandmother had them all over her house, and that was like the only book she had were those books. So when I showed up, that was all I read when I went to stay with my grandparents. But of course, there was no chance to buy gay fiction. And I had no idea even for the longest time that such a thing existed. I didn't really for the longest time have any idea that lesbians existed. And when I did, of course, I was told that they were bad. Um, yeah. It was you know, a very sinful thing. And there was a lot of self-loathing sort of thrown into there. So I didn't have access to any of this, you know, professionally published gay and lesbian fiction. So fan fiction, you know, I grew up in the age of the internet kicked in right around when I was a senior in high school and a freshman in college. And all of a sudden there was all this information that was opened up to me. I discovered fan fiction. It was the biggest eye opener ever. Uh, and for that reason, it'll always be dear to my heart because it introduced me not just to a lot of characters I love, but a whole new way of looking at and seeing and interacting with myself. It did take me a while, and again, I'm working with my journey as a reader here, uh, to wrap my head around fem slash, around queer female fan fiction, because it did feel so personal. Anybody who looks back at what I've written over the years, I have destroyed my earliest stories. They're... <laughs> <laughs> I took them offline. They're so bad. Uh, but the first thing that I wrote was really uh, male male fiction, uh, gay male fiction, believe it or not, even though I wasn't <laughs> straight. And most right. of the women writers for that are straight, I think. Uh, but it was a way, the way I look at it is that it was a way to investigate queerness with bodies that weren't like mine. Because mm -hmm. Femme Slash and Lesfic at the time was so personal, and it was something I was still dealing with. So I was kind of late to the party until I found The Devil Wears Prada. Uh, and that, again, was just so eye-opening and a way for me to kind of encounter myself. Yeah, as, in terms of part of a journey as a reader, if I focus on fan fiction a lot, it's because it was really one of the first things that was available to me that I saw myself reflected in, and that I could read without consequence. Like there was no book to hide under the bed and worry that, you know, my parents were going to find it or anything like that. That makes all the sense. And thank you for sharing that. I think th that mirrors a lot of my experience. I also grew up in a very conservative home and I read a lot of Harlequins and Danielle Steele and whatever my mom had kicking around. But like my 
dad was a deacon at our Baptist church and bisexuality was super not an option and was something that I didn't even have the ability to recognize until one day my husband said, hey, (laughs) you're reading a lot of lesbian books. Do you think you might be bi because it's okay and you're not going to go to hell? What a great thing to say. I mean, that's such an (laughs) affirming thing to hear. It was almost like I needed that permission to actually examine myself. Absolutely. And it was, you know, it was stumbling across and playing the role of herself on this list of books on Jezebel that really helped me to see, oh my God, this even exists as a thing. Because I did stumble across fanfic in university. I mean, it sounds like we're probably around the same age just from when, what you were saying. Yeah. But... When I hit the Harry Potter twin cest, I just noped out yeah. so hard and so fast from fanfic as a whole, which is a shame because I feel like if I maybe would have found other fandoms or just other stories that were not about the twins, yeah. uh, <laughs> yes. then, then I might have been able to have that examination of my sexuality a lot sooner. But even still, like better late than never and i'm grateful that you know i married somebody who wasn't afraid to poke at it and say maybe this is worth examining oh that's terrific so where can people find you online if they want to connect with you Rosalind? well uh, i'm on facebook and twitter i'm still kind of wrapping my mind around instagram nothing makes me feel more old-fashioned than social media to be honest uh, but on Facebook, I'm just Rosalind Sinclair. My profile is public, uh, so you can find me there. And on Twitter, I'm at writing Rosalind. Well, that is all for this episode. Thank you so much, Rosalind, for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. So I am Tara. You've all been listening to Les Do Books. Don't forget to email Tara at thelesbianreview.com with your questions and comments or join our Facebook group, The Lesbian Review Book Club, to talk about these books and anything else you're reading and loving. You can also find me and all the other podcasters on the Lesbian Talk Show channel at our Facebook group, The Lesbian Talk Show Chat Group. If you've enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to rate this show and subscribe. To find this and many other great shows, all you need to do is search for The Lesbian Talk Show on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher. 